I asked FPL experts to come up with their best transfer targets for game week 3 and this is what they came up with. And the first expert that I did consult was FPL Prem Tipster. If you want to get involved in future videos and potentially be a part of it, if you are a content creator or FPL expert, then go over to my Twitter, link to that in the description. And next time I put a tweet out, you could be involved and get yourself in these videos. As well, with all the experts included in today's videos, all the link to their YouTubes, Twitter, everything will be in the description. So go check them out and give them support this season. Starting off... The first player that has been kind of suggested is Brian and Buemo, and this, ladies and gentlemen, gets the FPL Tom seal of approval. I went with Brian and Buemo in my game week one draft, and honestly, life as a Brian and Buemo owner has just been brilliant. Like, I'm gonna paint a picture for you here, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine you can smell freshly cooked bacon, the birds are chirping, the sun is shining, your favourite tune has just come in the car and you've got the window down and you've got your glasses on. That's what it's been like as a Brian and Buemo owner in Game Week 1 and Game Week 2. 23 points for this man on penalties as well due to Ivan Tony's suspension. Brentford as well have just been absolutely killing it with these good fixtures as well coming up. Not like... Obviously, game week five is a little bit difficult, but kind of after that as well, it kind of goes in like patterns of two for Brentford. He's at that 6.5 million range, well, 6.6 .6 now. So there are other options as well you can kind of shift to when other players' fixtures do come and go. But honestly, this man has been exceptional. Watching him and Brentford attack, it has been like just exceptional. It's just been so, so good, ladies and gentlemen. I can't fathom into words why you should go for Brian and Wemo because it just seems so simple to be honest if you haven't got this man why you should be getting him the fixtures are so good he's banging form and Brentford look brilliant going forward so massively agree with FPL Prem Tipster on this one Brian and Wemo is a must buy for me in game week three Sticking with the Brentford theme, our next expert has recommended Visser from Brentford. Like I said with uh, Mbwemo, the fixtures are great. Brentford are absolutely killing it going forward as well. They accumulated 4 XG. I think it was 4.78 in the end against Fulham. Absolutely battered them. Put in a strong performance against Tottenham as well. You imagine with back-to-back -back home fixtures of Crystal Palace and Bournemouth, they're going to do the same again. And Mbwemo and Visser are probably going to be involved in the goals. I think the only reason that you potentially would go Visser is if you already maybe own Mbwemo and you want to go for the double up, not out of the question, with the good fixtures, it's an opportunity, especially if you have Jao Pedro as well, I think that is an opportunity, or if you can't get to Mbwemo, maybe in midfield's already stacked and Visser is your option out of maybe a Jao Pedro or upgrading one of your 4.5s if you've got the budget to do that as well. So I definitely think I prefer Mbwemo, you just get the penalties and he's a full like kind of 90 minute man where Visser's kind of been going off a little bit earlier than him. So I definitely think I do prefer Mbwemo out of the two. But if Visser is the only option that you can get to, I think he's looked fantastic as well. Getting plenty of opportunities down to basically Ivan Tony's absence. This man and Mbwemo have been absolutely killing it for Brentford. As you can see as well, his expected points are, I think, 0.3 lower than Brian Mbwemo. So there's not too much difference if you're looking at it from kind of a data standpoint as well. Both of them involved in the goals, like I said, but it is just that penalty appeal that Brian and Buemo has that I think just puts him that little bit ahead of Visser. But I still think he is a great transfer target and also gets the FPL Tom seal of approval. Nicholas Jackson is our next expert's transfer suggestion and this is a player that I am actually looking to bring into my own team. I do have Jao Pedro, I am looking at all replacements. Visser, Alvarez and Jackson are my top three that I'm potentially looking at. This expert has selected Jackson and there is kind of really good reason for that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the fixtures. Luton, Nottingham Forest, both games back to back at home as well and then Bournemouth away after that. Absolutely scintillating in fixtures from an FPL standpoint to be honest you imagine Chelsea are going to win all three the fixtures as well after that do continue to be great so there are so many options with Jackson as well the only concern is he just hasn't scored yet only picked up two points over the first two game weeks, picking up a yellow card in both weeks. But as you can see from his underlying data, 1.4 XG from the opening two games is very unfortunate not to have a goal. I think his on-field performances as well, his movement around the ball, the positions that he's getting into, he is going to score. And you imagine when he plays these lesser teams, 
you do imagine then the goals are going to start to appear, or you would hope so. Otherwise, we've got another Nunes on our hand where we're just seeing XG go up, but not our points and not our goals. So I definitely think he is one to be considering. There obviously is the concern that he might not be able to get the goals, and he's just kind of an XG merchant, which we have seen in previous seasons on FPL. But hopefully, with these good fixtures and the positions that he is getting into, he will eventually start to bag, and you would imagine it would be around this price point as well. There aren't too many other kind of competitors for that strike spot within the Chelsea lineup. And with the penalty miss as well for Enzo, it does pose the question, is Jackson potentially going to be the next penalty taker? That is out there. If we can get a penalty taker with this run of fixtures for one of the better teams in the league at 7 million, I do think it makes sense. So it's going to get the FPL Tom seal of approval. It is a player that I am looking to potentially bring into my own side as well. It is just that case of whether or not he's an XG merchant or he can actually start to convert some of these chances. FPL Dawn is the next expert that sent in their kind of transfer suggestion and it is Julian Alvarez and there's very good reason for this ladies and gentlemen down to the KDB injury and how fluid that City front three of Foden, Haaland and Julian Alvarez looked at the weekend. They were scintillating to watch ladies and gentlemen. One goal, one assist for him. Okay XG and okay XA. The point scored is 12 and he's expected to score 11.9 over the next three game weeks and they are some very delicious fixtures indeed. Sheffield United look absolutely miserable, so you imagine City are going to absolutely romp them at Bramall Lane, and Fulham over the first two game weeks have conceded the most goals expected, so you imagine they're going to be a club struggling down the bottom. I think it's Tosin Adebayo, I think that's how you pronounce it as well, looks to potentially be leaving to AS Monaco, and he was one of their better defenders last year. Issa Diop is a massive fraud, and anyone who buys his so rare nft deserves to be shot and don't value their football opinion at all to be honest um but yeah i definitely think city are going to have some really good high performing players in these next two game weeks and julian alvarez again like i said in the last section is a player that i'm potentially looking as a jao pedro replacement the fixtures are there that city front three is starting to cook it's whether or not i want to dabble in playing a little bit of pep roulette that is always the big issue especially with them signing the new lad at doku or dunku don't know how you pronounce it as always I'm terrible with pronunciation, but yeah, I'm not 100% on the pronunciation, but he is going to start to impact his way into the game and potentially limit players' minutes like Alvarez, like Foden, like Bernardo Silva as well when he comes back from illness or injury. I can't remember which one it is. So, you know, that is what... Do I want to play Pep Roulette? Not really. I've been burnt by this before. Would I rather go for a safer option like a Jackson who I think is going to get like the amount of minutes needed? Yes. So that is my only concern with potentially going for Julian Alvarez. But like I said, he is a player that I'm potentially looking at. It's just whether or not I want to just throw my hat in the ring and play a little bit of pep roulette. Sticking with the Manchester City theme, our next expert, FPL Caesar, has recommended Foden. And again, I'm hot on this. I really, really like this as a potential pick. I have been eyeing up Phil Foden as a potential replacement in my side for Mohamed Salah. But with Gabriel not playing, I think I do have to kind of prioritise playing players before removing kind of luxury transfers like players like Phil Foden. But those two fixtures, the next two, are absolutely delicious for Manchester City. Only 10% owned as well for Phil Foden. Julian Alvarez as well, below 10%. So these guys are massive differentials. If you want to throw your hat in the ring, like I said, play a little bit of pet roulette. There are like big upside to doing this, but also there's massive downside. Benchings, coming off early, new signings as well. It's always a little bit of a headache. And sometimes I do feel like it's just not worth it. But as you can see from the ex expected points, ladies and gentlemen, 17.1 absolutely ridiculous for a player of Phil Foden's class. The price point as well is super easy to access for a lot of players. Maybe looking to downgrade Marcus Rashford. Maybe like me, you're thinking maybe Salah's not the one and you want to potentially go for a cheaper option. Free up some funds elsewhere in the squad. I think Phil Foden does offer that as well. Like I said, that City front three were just cooking the other, other day, ladies and gentlemen. They had the oven full blast. They were getting all their food nice and quickly out of the kitchen, to be honest, ladies and gentlemen. He looked fantastic as well, creating so many glorious opportunities. On another day, 
he could have hauled. Nine points was flattering, to be honest, for Phil Foden's performance. So I definitely think he's a player. This one gets the FPL Tom seal of approval and a player you should potentially be eyeing up for your game week free transfer targets. And starting off is our final experts pick. It is a doji from Tottenham Hotspur, a 4.5 million defender that has not only caught my eye, but is starting to catch the eye of other top FPL managers as well. Only 2.5% owned. And as you can see, Tottenham's fixtures are amazing over the next three. Bournemouth, Burnley and Sheffield United. And the reason this man has catched my eye is from an, uh, an eye test perspective, to be honest. I was watching the United game the other day with a United friend and fan and flatmate as well. Uh, we were watching the game together and I was kind of watching the inverted runs that Ped Porro was making. I was like, if this guy keeps doing this, he's going to get opportunities. And then a doji started doing it on the left-hand side. He appeared a few times randomly in the box. I think he had a really good opportunity where Son played him through and he had a shot saved by Onana as well. So if they're getting into these positions for 4.5 million with good fixtures as well, it seems like he is potentially nailed as well. Has played the opening two first games. You can't quite say that about Ped Porro as Emerson Royale played the first one. We don't know whether that was tactical or for an injury reason. So I think a doji just kind of is a little bit clear. 4.5 million, so 0.5 cheaper than Ped Porro as well. And the data that he's putting up from a defensive perspective, catching the eye test as well, getting in those advanced positions, I really, really like this as a pick. I think this guy is going to be my Gabriel replacement. 4.5, good fixtures as well. Frees up an extra 0.5 million in the bank, which would allow me to then go from Ped Porro, not Ped Porro, Jao Pedro, sorry, to Jackson as well. Freeing up that extra funds to kind of make that move easy and possible with my two free transfers. The fixtures are great. He's looking great as well. Passing the eye test, picking up good underlying data. I think it is only a matter of time before he potentially gets a haul or an attacking return in the next few weeks. So this one as well gets the FPL Tom seal of approval. If you did enjoy today's video or want to go check any of the kind of experts links, all that stuff is going to be in the description. Make sure to subscribe as well as we are trying to hit 2,000 subs here on the channel. I think we're about 250 away, so if we could do that by the end of the month, that would be excellent. But thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy the rest of your day.